Okay. We left off the Gemara had a Shiloh regarding Kenyan Agav. That when you transfer property, fixed property, and you transfer simultaneously the Talpin movables, do the movables have to be contained in the domain in which you're transferring? Or even if they're elsewhere, you could transfer both simultaneously, even though the Metalpin are elsewhere. Just want to get stuck Chavavam and Alf on the bottom again. Reb Kiva Omer, Karka Koshu Chayev Spepeyo will be Bikurim. If you have even a small piece of property, small piece of land, you're obligated, if you actually grow something on it, you have to leave the corner of that property, as small as it may be, will be Bikurim. The produce that grows from there, one has to bring Bikurim. Correct, correct. Of course, we find there are, regarding other things, there are certain dimensions. Whatever. I just want to read Rashi, and that's why I'm just going over this. Because there's a girsa over here, it says, Ube Vidui. Logar Sinon. Vidui, there's a confession you make. He says, you delete that from the text. Da'api she'en lo karka mizvada la maisros v'yocholoma v'orech esamcho yisrael v'ladomot. Torah speaks about Vidui Meiser. That a person has grain, produce, which he hadn't tithed. By the th- third year, the end of the third year, he has to distribute all the various tithes to the levy, to the Kohen, to the poor, whoever they may be. And he says, Biyarti HaKodesh Min He makes a confession. I've removed all the Kodesh. That that had sanctity, I've removed it from my home. So over there, you have to, the produce, where the produce grew, did you have to own the property on which the produce initially grew? He says, see in a moment, one doesn't have to. He says, the Even one who doesn't own any property, he says, if he has the tithes, initially he gave it, gave it away. And you say, in the text, and the land that you've given us, it's not comparable to Bikurim. What's Bikurim? There's a declaration by Bikurim also. The boy li that you've given it to me. So therefore, let's say you rent a piece of property. You rent a piece of property, and you grow something on it. And now you bring Bikurim, but does one have an obligation to increase Bikurim? Do you make the declaration? So there's a whole discussion in in uh, Basra. Do we say Kenya pairs Kenya goof? That if you have the rights to draw f- from its profits, I mean the produce, is that the equivalent of owning the property or not? Although you don't own the property, you're going to return the property to the, uh, to the owner. I mean, the Gemara asks the question: If that's the case, every property that we, which returns in Yovel, which in the, f- in the 50 year returns, how does anybody have Kriyas Prius Bikurim? If you have the opinion, Kinyi Pairs Lav Naguf, that having the produce rights is not the equivalent of owning the property. So Mar says that if you could trace the, the, your ownership back to Yeshua ben Nun when he, when he divided the land, if you're of that position, that's when you, that's when you have Kriyas Bikurim. Because it's not Hadoma Shasatali. It's not, it's not your land. It's not Hadoma Shasatali. But regarding Vidin Maser, it's not Li. It's Lonu. It's from the land that you, you've given us. So us, even if you, you don't own the property, it's not a problem. You're able to say the vidu, you could make the confession after you've distributed, you've given all the various percentages to the rightful parties who have to receive it. The Gemara in Brochus, if you remember, learned it way back, that the Gemara has a shaila, is a woman obligated in Birchus HaMosem. Gemara has a shaila. Because, because we say question of the successors among Grumma, whatever. So this question, how Rashi learns and how Tosis learns. So Tosis asks on Rashi, because a woman herself, she's not circumcised. 
she wasn't given the Torah. Torah, so she, 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 right? She was a tonu, brischa, shesambi, v'sarenu, a woman. So Tosas asks, so what about a levy? A levy has no share in the land, right? It's b'chas oretz, yet he says it. So how, how does he say it? The answer is, we're speaking about, lonu means klal Yisrael. The land that was given to klal Yisrael. So therefore, that's not the question. Therefore, Tosas disagrees. So whenever we say lonu, Lanu doesn't mean you as a person. Lanu means collectively. Right? Arsa Shisata Lanu. There's no Lanu means even though we the Levi never never received land. Correct? But since he's part of Klaw Yisrael, that's considered he's received it. No, no, the Mar leaves it unresolved. The Mar has a question, could a woman cover a man based on Shemeya Kaona in Bechusamozo? Right? That that's the question of the Mar. The Mar leaves it unresolved whether a woman can or cannot. She is Personally, she is obligated. She is Minimally, rabbinically, she's obligated. But if a man who has a, has a Torah obligation, where he, eat, where he eats to a sated point, could she cover, could she cover the man? Levi is not a question, definitely. Because that's what Tosas points out. <laughs> that that we say, So, I mean, Levi is also circumcised, but he doesn't have a share in the land. But again, but since men, the men did receive a, p- a portion of the land. Although he personally didn't receive, he's able to say, Nasato, the land you've given us, although he never received any land. No, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. The reason is the bris. Because the bris. But Tosa says never she could say it. It's not considered saying something which is false. Because not because Klal Yisrael, among Jews, Jews are circumcised. So Tosis differentiates between Bikurim, which is Nosato Li, and Nosato Lono, and Vidu Masa. So therefore, you don't have to own property. So therefore, he deletes it from the Girsa. Tosis is the same thing. Discussion, famous Rabbi Kiva Eger, you know, um, Musaf, Musaf. <coughs> the, why do we say Musaf? It's the place of the curb, Musaf. So the question is, who was obligated to give the uh, Bach Shekel? Only somebody above, above the age of 20. If you're 20 and above, you have an obligation. But a person who's less than 20 had no obligation. So what was the master shekel used for? For the carbonate zibor, for the communal offerings. So Musaf is a communal offering. So if that's the case, the question is, is a bar mitzvah boy who's less than 20 years old, is he, quali- should he, is he qualified to be the shlich zibor for Musaf? Because he doesn't participate in the master shekel. So some say it's best he should not be the shlich zibor. So others, they, take, t- t- they, 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 they question the issue. Factually, Everybody's atoned. Anybody who needs kapora is atoned by through the carbon tzibur, through the musaf, or whatever the carbon may be. So if that's the case, but you question, but he didn't participate. What the answer is? Because it atones for klal yisrael. So anybody who's part of klal yisrael, a woman doesn't give matzah shekel either. So although a woman doesn't go to, you mean she doesn't have kapora because she doesn't participate in matzah shekel. So you see, having kapora uncovered is unrelated to whether you contribute or you don't contribute. As long as you're part of Kalal Yisrael, that's, that's sufficient. So you're qualified for the Musaf. That's, that's the point that's made. Adamish is Atolanu. Well, whatever. She's not, she's not able to have Musaf. No. There's a question whether she has to even have the, the regular Shimon Israel. Right. Okay. Okay, let's get back to the Gemara. Rebkivo mekar koshu chayvus bipeyo bibikurin the list of alei prusbol. We discussed this yesterday. Even if it's a small piece of property, it qualifies that if the borrower has property, the loan which was lent to that person qualifies for prusbol to protect the debt. The list of simos nechosim shein lemachrayus. 
and to use that property as a means to transfer metalpolin, movables. But if you're telling me that the movables that you're transferring have to be contained within the property, if it's a minuscule piece of property, a small piece of land, what's its value? What's its capacity? Tirgmar of Shmuel Bar Bisno coming to Rav Yosef, where the person wants to sell the man a needle. Omele Rav Yosef Kavastam. So Rav Yosef said to Rav Shmuel Bar Bisno, he says, "You pain me by by, by, by posing such a question." Tana Lashmin Machat. So what's the chiddush? I mean, we know there's a lot of Kenyan agav. If this Kenyan agav, what's the of It's a needle, or it's anything else you're transferring. So, so what the Tana is going to bother me, it has to speak about a small piece of property you could transfer a needle. Why is the difference between you have an acre you could transfer an animal or a small piece of property you could transfer a needle? Well, what's he telling me? What's the Chiddush? It's worthless. If I steal your needle, my thief, right? I still have to transfer it to you. To be yours, I have to transfer it. You want a Makadosh Nish with a, with a Machat? Is she Mukodeshes? If it's a Shavu Prut, is she Mukodeshes? Okay, so we're talking about something. So if you're transferring something, so does he have to tell me that, you know, you could transfer a needle on a property which is very small? So what's the Chiddush? The Tana is, is going to waste my time with this. He has to, a Tana has to tell me a Chiddush. He's not telling me the laws of, 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 of Agav. Laws of Agav, that's the Mishnah. The Mishnah tells me the laws, laws of Agav. That when you transfer property, you could transfer movables. Reb Kiva goes to tell me, you know something, even if it's tiny, you could transfer a needle. So what's the Chiddush? What's the difference if it's large, you could transfer an animal, or it's small and you could transfer a needle? Same thing. So on that he answers, Omer Avashi man lemelod lotolo bar magnisa de shavi alfa zuzi. He says, who said that the Tana is not speaking in a case where the machat has a diamond on it, which is worth a thousand dollars? So the movable has greater value than the, than the fixed property. So if that's the case, as we explained yesterday, what is the pr- if, if the principle of Agav is that the movable is integrated, okay, integrated resources, or subsumed by the property, so I'd say over here, if the needle has greater value than the property, maybe it's not. The Chiddush is, no, if it's movable, since it can be disposed of, innate value is not based on the dollar value, but it's on what the reality is. One's fixed, one's immovable. We don't differentiate what its value is. Therefore, even if it has multiple times value of the property, you're able to transfer it through the property. That's the Chiddush Rebbe Kiva. Well, not so much just an ordinary needle. Okay, so it has a, a diamond on it. So, so that therefore, that the, the, the case that, uh, that that's that's Rebbe t- That's the Chiddush Rebbe Kiva. Uh, even though it's worth more than the property, or multiple times more than the property, nevertheless, you're able to transfer the needle with the, with the transaction of transferring the property. Okay? Which concept? Now, when we talk about subsuming, if, if the property was large enough to hold the items, that takes me down one road. But when it's not, and the items are somewhere else, how do I know that I can put it into the transaction? So that's what we discussed yesterday. Wait, what is the source of that? Same source. The, the Gemara quoted a Pasuk. He transferred the movables with the cities. Now, where were these movables? That's our question. Were they elsewhere, or were they were within, contained within the cities? Okay, that's the Gemara is asking the question. Maybe not. Maybe not. Any, wherever the movables may be. That, that is the question. But once that's the issue, then we have to understand what, are, what exactly is the mechanics. What are the mechanics of, of, of Agav? And as we discussed yesterday, is it subsumed? Or once, if you remember, in Sanhedrin, is a que- we know that a husband is not qualified to testify on behalf of a wife. Although he's not a korov. A husband to wife is not a korov. He's called Nogea. He's Nogea. Since we say Ishtu Kugufo, we say he's no gea. It's like testifying about yourself. So as a result of that, we don't say We don't say that if you find a defect in the testimony, 
if part of the testimony is defective, we disqualify the whole testimony. We don't say that. So there, the Gemara is a Shiloh. The, this is the sugi of, we spoke in Palgin di Bura. The Gemara had a question, person testifies. Person says, Plony Ravani Ritzoni. A person uh, committed, uh, did an act of sodomy, and he, he, he consented to it. So there, the Gemara says, say Palgin di Bura. The court only hears, so-and-so committed an act of sodomy. Because they know the Mesa Matsu Rosha, the person cannot cr- incriminate himself. So therefore, that part of the testimony is accepted. So why don't we say, but part of this testimony we were discarding? The answer is because he's, that's not, he's not called a Korov. When he said Luritsoni, what exactly is the basis for that disqualification? Not because, because he's a Korov, because that's a Nogea. Nogea means it's your testimony about yourself. It's not called you're, you're, you're a relative, okay? So now, so the Mars Shah, one person is Ploni, uh, he, person testified, Ploni Boalishti, or my wife committed adultery. He says his wife committed adultery with someone else. We forewarned her, and someone she committed adultery. So, do we actually disqualify the testimony? Or do we say, we only hear so and so committed adultery? So Rashi learns over there the case that that since regarding the third party, since regarding the third party, he is believed. So once I believe him regarding the third party, I'm able to re- believe him regarding his wife. No, no, it's his wife. It's his wife. So it does make a difference. The old, why is Nogea not believed? I cannot testify if I, if, if I have a conflict. Right? It's his wife. So to, test, to say his wife committed adultery is definitely not... He's not qualified to testify, because that's no gaya. But what about you testify to someone else, and the person participating with someone else happened to be your wife? So why is your testimony being accepted? Because you're qualified regarding the third party. Once you accept it regarding the third party, maybe you should even believe him regarding his wife. It's like an agav. No, I'm just saying. You have to see the word Sanhedrin. But that's the way Tosas argues with Rashi. But that's the way Rashi learns the case. Once you accept his testimony, once it's accepted... You could accept it even in areas which are not normally accepted. It's Rashi over there in Dafyut. It's like a Gilgul. So I'm saying the same thing over here. Regardless of where the metalkle may be, but if I'm doing one act of, tr- of transfer, so normally you cannot transfer metalkle with, with, with a document or with kesef. But once I'm transferring fixed property, you could transfer anything with that same act of transfer, even metalkle. So that would be true even if it's elsewhere. Of course, it's not the concept, it's not, it's subsumed by the property. But rather, it's the act of transfer can include multiple things because it's not specifically addressing the metabolism. No, the more, what you mean? This obscure also, very late in our history. And there wasn't an earlier source? Oh, yes, it's the same thing. Salochal Sinai. Well, okay, good. So now... No, it w- so there, there is no source. It's all oral. There's, there's not even a text. It's not based on a text. So what we read in, in Novi, that is only recording what was given at Sinai. It's a halakha mishim. Halakha mishim, definitely. It's halakha mishim. Halakha mishim, Sinai. Definitely. You couldn't say that this is a rabbinic enactment based on... No, no, no. It's not mentioned anywhere. No. No, correct, yeah. correct, correct. We have Meshicha. Meshicha, the says explicitly, going to Rabbi Yochanan, that the primary Kenyan is Kesef. So what is Meshicha? It's Rabbanon. It's a rabbinical enactment. No, no, not trans. Simultaneously. I'm transferring the land with all that's contained within the land. The, the, the deed. It says in the deed. I'm transferring the house with all its contents. It's one trans. It's not A and then B. It could be Kesef. It could be Kesef too. How, although, how else would you transfer it? It's no different than transferring the property by itself. Right? We can get to Ramalil at least further down Ramalil. Okay.
Agav means, um, normally means like by the way. That's what Agav means. By the way of. By the way of, literally. How does he transfer it? Translate? Agav. It's by the way of. The, by the way of tr the property, you also are able to transfer the. What? It's spelled differently. Gav is with a vav. This is a base. Agav. Gav means back. Okay. Toshma. So we have no proof. From the first b'risa, we have no proof. Omer HaBeloza Masa B'Madoni Yechod. This is where we left off yesterday. There was an incident with this person who came from a location called Modon. Shoyi B'Yushalayim. Shoyi Lo Metaltlin Harbi. He had an abundance of movables. Ubike Shlitnam B'Matono. And he wanted to gift it to a third party. And he wanted to know how could he transfer <coughs> to the third party. Omrlo Elo Takona Achiyikname Al Gabi Agabi Karka. They said there is no way to deal with it unless you transfer it through property. Agabi Karka. Mo'osa, so what do you do, this person? They said there's no solution unless you do this. Maosa, holach bodokach bisela. He went and purchased a base seller. So the Gemara says, what does base seller mean? A piece of property no larger than a coin, which its denomination is seller. That's how large the coin is. Okay? Somach Yushalayim, its location was near Yushalayim. Vomat Svoni Zeleploni. That the northern part of this piece of property, which is the size of the coin, so something which is minuscule, should be transferred to so and so. Vimo, and together with, with that transfer, Meitzon Mechavios. Umes, 100 sheep and 100 barrels. And then he passed away. So the question is now was it a valid transfer? Vikim was Dvorov. And the Chachomim upheld what he had done. What? No, he transferred the property. Whatever way he transferred property. No, he says he transferred the northern piece of that piece of property, was the size of a coin. In addition, no. Whatever he used, Kesef, doesn't. It says he transferred. Otherwise, how does how do you? Whatever it is, Svoni Zelipla. Why could he could have he could have given him a document? Svoni Zeliploni. It should be for plon. We're not talking about shchiv meira here. Later, the Gemara will discuss shchiv meira. Well, the Gemara is going to have no. It's an argument. Machlok tanoim. Right? Whether you can, a shchiv meira, a person on his deathbed, could he transfer something just verbally? Or he has to also has to do a, a transfer with an uh, instrument of transfer. It says, V'kimaz dvorov, v'yav rabinet tzvurim, bo, if you say that it has to be contained within the property, v'yselah l'maychozi, a piece of property that's the size of a coin, what's its, what's, what's its value? What's its function? So it says, v'yselah 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 mamash, when we said he purchased something with the base seller, does it mean literally the size of a coin? My seller did not fish tuva. It's a very large piece of property. My koile seller, the koshi kesella, meaning it wasn't fit for agriculture. You couldn't plant there. It was it was like like a it was like stone. It was like a clay piece of property. But in fact, it was a very large piece of property. So again, no, there's no proof. As a result, there's no proof. Base seller doesn't mean the size, but rather base seller means in terms of its 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 function. It was it wasn't it wasn't uh, fit for agriculture. So on that you could you could put a very large piece of property. See here it's not telling us a chidush. Before we Rebbe Kiva, it's a brisa. Quoting a brisa, so what's Rebbe Kiva telling us? So here there was an incident with so and so. He was advised to do that. So he wanted to be proof. Says no, there's no proof to anything. There he was, he was being advised on a personal level what he should do. Toshma. Domer of Yudo. Omer Av. Masibodim Echot Shcholim Yushalayim. Now there's a question what exactly was, was, the, was the incident. A person who f fell ill, I mean he was, he was on his deathbed. 
So if he's on now, there's an argument in Bava Basra whether we say Divri Shchiv Merak Yichshum Mesurim Dami or not. Based on the principle of Hefker Bez and Hefker, if a person on his deathbed, we are, you know, his emotionally is very delicate, and it, somehow he becomes upset, the person could die. So we want to remove any degree of pressure from him. So now he has his last will and testament, and he wants to communicate it orally, not with the document. Now the question is, normally, to transfer anything, you have to have an act of transfer, an instrument of transfer. You need a kinyon. His words, do we value his words as if they are the equivalent of a kinyon? So it's a machlokas. The chom say, divrei shchivrei akim sur musurum dami. That the words are pressed on his deathbed, what he says, it's the equivalent of a transfer. Rebbe Loza says, no, that just as a healthy person needs an instrument of transfer, an act of transfer, a shchimur is no different. So now the question is, there was an incident where the person became ill in Yerushalayim, either Kareb if the if the text, if the incident was he was deathly ill, that's even, go, the story is going even, uh, only according to Rebbe Lozer, Right? Because even if he's deathly ill, he still need an act of transfer. Va'amri labori hoyo. He was a healthy person. So if he's a healthy person, everybody agrees. Kirabonan, like the Chachomim, the Chachomim say, because if he'd be a Shechid Meiraf, be on his deathbed, you wouldn't need an instrument of transfer. To transfer what has to be transferred, his words would be enough. Shoy Lamataltlin Harbeik. Again, he had an abundance of movables. Ubikish Litlin Bamatona. And he wanted to give it as a gift, to gift it before he died. Omru Lo. So the Chachomim said to him, Ain lo takona kaka. The only way you could transfer it, it's only, again, by the way of property. Fixed property. Ma'oso. So what did he do? Holach v'lokach beis rovach. Some Yerushalayim. He bought a piece of property which was beis rovach, certain size. V'omar. And he said, of that beis rovach, whatever, it was an acre. He says, tefach al tefach leploni. Of that property, a tefach here, four inches by four inches should belong to so and so. And here he has an abundance of, of metaltalin. The emo, and together with that, so we're talking about tefach al tefach, you can't tell me, before we said sela, be sela means that's the quality of the land. Right? It was not fit for planting, for agriculture. But here he says, how large is the piece of property which I'm transferring to so and so? Tefach al tefach, four inches by four inches. The emo may its own mechavios. And through that property that I'm transferring, I'm transferring 100 sheep and 100 barrels. Umes, and then the man dies. Passed away. And they, up, they, up, they upheld the transfer. It was a valid transfer. The Amrit bin Tzvurin, if you're telling me for the transfer movables that be contained within the property, a piece of property where the area is four inches by four inches, What's exactly, what could it accommodate? And here we're talking about he's transferring 100 sheep, 100 barrels. So evidently, clearly, so we see Agav actually is able to bring about the transfer, even if, if it's not contained in the property. So Mar says, When he says 100 sheep, 100 barrels, we're talking about the value. So we're talking about money. So the, the, the amount of money, you're able to put on a piece of land which is tefach al tefach. Let's say a pile of gold coins, pile them up, it's able to be contained within the area of tefach al tefach. The Dmei. When he said the sheep, 100 sheep, 100 barrels, doesn't mean, means the value of 100 sheep and 100 barrels. You would think Well, again, we're telling over a story. Telling over a story. That's the way he expressed himself. Right? No, there's no question. It's a dochik. It's a dochik. But when you want to bring a proof, right? Proof has to be uncont- it has to be uncontestable, a definitive proof. It's not a proof. Because if you say that's the way people would speak. Right? If that's the way pre- people speak, so therefore, 
when they say emo or male for this reason, it means actually have so and didn't have the public to have the money for it. The value of, of it, not that. Is that the Bator the Belushman? No, no let, 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 let me explain to you. You have to say the man's on his deathbed. So he doesn't have the greatest clarity of mind. See, he wants, let's say his son is going to business or he wants to put this other person in business. He wants to be a shepherd. The Mara says in Chulin that if you, if you, um, you know, sheep are called Ashtaros. Ashtaros Karnaim. So the Mara says, why are sheep called Ashtaros? Shemashiras is Baleim. Person who's a shepherd who has sheep raises sheep he becomes wealthy. Why? Because from sheep you have both multiple benefits. You have the you have the shearings continuously. You have the meat of the sheep, and even after the sheep is killed, its bones you can use its bones for ver for a horn for various things. Now one time they used the uh, whale bones for for corsets. That's what they used it. Nothing goes to waste in the sheep. So it's called Ashtro Shemashiras is Balian. It makes the one who owns the sheep wealthy. He wants to put somebody in, into business. So he wants to transfer him the means to buy 100 sheep and to open the tavern. 100 barrels. Okay? So how do you know what that is? He doesn't know what it is. Whatever it takes to purchase that, that amount of money, that's what I want to give him. So let's say they take more than that amount and put it on. So let's say that we have to make that evaluation later. Even if we put more, how much of the money is he transferring? He's transferring that. So if it's more, so he's transferring that amount. And the more still belongs to what? The heir will belong to the heirs. Yes, you hear? Sitli de Meg. Hochanam Mistavro. And he says it's logical to say this. That it's the value and it's not the what? The actual sheep and the actual barrels. Disog daidach meyotso meyachovios mamish. Niknil nele bechalipin. He should have transferred chalipin. Right? Gives him the garment. He says, "Look, give me the garment, and in and, 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 and place of the garment, I transfer the want, the sheep and the barrels." And everybody agrees. No, even the Gemara says, even contra Yochanan, who owes Kenyan Kesef, they annulled it because we have to protect the buyer. But since Kenyan Chalipin is is not the the prevalent Kenyan, it's most Loshchicha, they didn't validate that Chalipin. So Chalipin is, is is an effective Kenyan. It's oh, not it's everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. everything. No, because people don't. That's not the way it is. Okay? Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait. So why don't he do with Chalipin? Elamai. Lidmei. So what is it? He's giving him the money. He's giving him the money. So let him take, let him take the money. He, if the man is there, let him give him the money. He'll take the money. Yeah, if you're dealing with sheep and, and, and barrels, that we understand. You're not able to do it. But if it's Lidmei, correct? So why does he put it in his hand? They could do Chalipin. We'll discuss that in a minute. Meshicha. Correct. The Gemara says in the says that money cannot be transferred with Chalipin. But why not? It's a whole discussion of them. Why not? It's a question. It's a question, the Gemara. Most niktis by Chalipin, most say niktis by Chalipin. Talking about the tzura, the tzura of the coin, right? Okay. So Mar says, "The Mar says, 'Nikne neli b'mishich b'mishicha, elu the lessi lam kalbu matonis.' What are you going to say? <coughs> the recipient is not there. Meaning, a third party is representing the recipient. It's zikah through zchus zochalad mishlo b'fanov." A third party's represent, take this on behalf of so and so. So the Gemara's going to say, he doesn't trust him. You know, I'm not going to give him cash. You know, he can pocket the money. 
So the one who's gifting it, Elad Lesse, Lemakabu Matona, the recipient of the gift is not here. Ochanami, the Lesse Lemakabu Matona. One second. Viniskinu Nele Agavacher. So let him give it through a third party. If he's not here, so get him. You have to understand. So how is he doing it anyway? Right? The Gemara is asking. We're saying, the man is not here. Right. And, th and through Agav, how do you do it? He's not, is it? So how do you transfer it? You have to transfer it through a third party. Right? It's not here. So, Mar is, so let's do it through Acher. Lo Somcha Daite. Right? Sova Shomit Vohilu. How do you gift it? The man's not here. I, I want to give a gift to, to Reuven. I have, there has to be some connection between the gifter and the receiver, yeah. right? So, uh, so that means somebody has to do an act of acquisition. Yeah. So if it's keen, let's say it's keen, I'll, gi I'll give the deed for the property to so-and-so on behalf of so-and-so. Right. That I'll do. But what about if I'm dealing with metal, with, 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 with cash, right? 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 Because he doesn't trust him. Right. So what does it mean? Ain lo takono? Hochem lemaid lo somcha daite ain lo takono at shikne malgav karka. Because he doesn't trust, he's not willing to give the value. So the only way to transact it through a third party is by doing it through kinyan agav. Take this deed for the piece of property, which is whatever it may be, and through the property, simultaneously, I'm transferring the value, the cash. You really have to leave that machine Correct. Well, Khalipin was saying, because it's cash. No, so there, I'll transfer property. I'll give you the de deed for the piece of property. What do you do with a piece of property? Cash, you, you know, I put the cash. Do you ever deliver it? You know, years ago, there was a Jew in, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina. His name Albert Waitman knew him, and he was a very special Jew, and he was a very wealthy Jew, and this is in, in the 30s, when his wife would have to go to the mikveh, there was no mikveh in, in Greensboro, North Carolina, so he had a well, and he created this contraption on a pulley, and like it says in the Mishnah in Yuma, that they would take the kior, and they put it on a pulley system, and they would crank it down into the into the spring, the ground spring. So whenever his wife had to go to the mikveh, she went into this contraption, and it would crank it down. She'd go into the into this underground spring, and then he'd crank it up. That that's how meticulous he wasn't a learned person, but for the sake of Taras Mishpacha, that's what he did, and he was a very wealthy man. And um, he, and, and this is in the 30s. He only knew. Oh, that one yeshiva existed. Yeshiva University. Didn't know there was any other yeshiva. Greensburg, what do you know about what, what's out in the world? He went there in the late 1800s. So he's not aware what's going on in New York City. And somehow there was a mishulach coming through town. And he heard there's a yeshiva called Tervedas. And he got very excited. He says, there's something else. You know, I'd like to support that also. If that's what it's about, I want to support it. In those days, nobody wrote a check, and he dealt in. He, he was in the, he was a, a department. He was in department stores. He had a chain of department stores in, in that area. So he took a bag, put five thousand dollars in cash in a bag, and he says to the Mishulah, "Deliver it." He, he says, "You want to know? Say, I'm going to New York." The value, the money never arrived. You understand? Never arrived at Tarvadas. Five thousand dollars cash in the thirties. Put it in a ba paper bag. Deliver it. Okay. You know, when you give cash to somebody, you don't, unless you know who the person is, you can't trust them. So therefore, Kenyan Agha, if you gave it through the property. Okay.